Hello everybody. So today's video is about Firebase CRUD. Now don't worry, I'm not swearing at you, it's just an acronym. And I'll, I'll tell you what it is real quick. So today's agenda. First we gotta set up a Firebase project. Then we gotta add Firebase to our Flutter app. And then we got a CRUD. So CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. These are the four main operations that databases can do. Firestore and Firebase especially. One important concept that you need to have a good grasp on before we get into this is called asynchrony. It's a, it's a complicated topic and I'll make sure to have a link in the description. So check that out if you're not sure about what asynchrony and asynchronous programming is. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is set up our Firebase project. So let's set up a project called Flutter Firebase. Firebase, continue. We don't want Google Analytics for this. And then you're gonna to have to wait a little bit for it to create the project. Okay, it is done. Let's continue, and here is our project. So first thing we're gonna to need to do is gonna we're gonna to want to set up with our Android app. So let's look at our Android package name. You can find the package name in uh, build.gradle in the app part. Your package name should be this right here, application ID. So control C, control V, Flutter Firebase and register the app. So we're gonna get the JSON and we're gonna wanna place it in the Android root directory. So my root directory is here. We go to Android. I want to place this JSON file in here. And I think, I don't know if you need to do this, but I think you should rename it to googleservices.json. And if you don't need to, I think it's still a good habit. So that's done. Then we go to next and we're gonna have to copy these things into our build.gradle. So the first one is the project level build gradle. Project level build gradle is this one. We're gonna want Google services 4.3.2, right, correct. And we have Google up here and we have Google here already added. So we're all good on that. Then I'm gonna to want to go to this build.gradle in the app section. I'm gonna to want to add plugin of Google services and that's it. Last thing we need is to add a cloud firestore, cloud forest firestore in our project.yaml. So we have our app added, then we're gonna to wanna to go into the database. We're gonna to wanna to start a firestore database. So create database. Start in test mode. Can I get these rules? This just makes it so, so you can only use it in test mode for 30 days, but we can remove that later. Then you create your location. That's where I am. And it will create a Firestore database for you. Okay, so our database is made and I think we're all ready to go into the code. Okay, so you guys saw that error had to do with multi-dex or shrinker in order to fix if you get that error in order to fix it you want to just make your minimum SDK version 21. Something happened with something called multi-dex on SDK version 21 so just if you update that it should work again. I'll have a link in the description to explain multi-dex more if you're interested. Okay so here we have the app. First thing we need is final firestore and that should already add it here. Firestore equals Firestore dot instance. I think Firestore needs to be capitalized. Firestore dot instance. Beautiful. So once we have our instance of our Firestore database, we're going to want to move on to doing the actual functions. So for all these functions, we're going to want to make them async functions. Async means it's asynchronous, which means it is, 
it is things that are happening outside of the main event loop of the function. So pretty much while the program can keep running while the asynchronous functions are executing. We're going to want to put all these and everything we do inside uh, any asynchronous functions or especially database accessing functions. We want to wrap them in a try catch. That means if anything goes wrong with the in the side of the database or retrieving or sending out data, we will be able to try to do that thing. And then if it doesn't work, we will be able to catch the error. So for this one, we will have an await. So the, while the asynchronous function is going on in the background and the, everything is still waiting, we still want to know when we retrieve the values. That await will, will mean that we have got the value from the database, we have awaited it, and then after the await, we could execute actions according to what we want to do with the information. So await, we will want to do Firestore and then um, collection, we will want to create a collection with a name, let's say users, and we'll want to make, create a document, and we'll call it uh, test user. We're gonna want to set the data for that document and you set data like this. So let's say first name is test. Last name is user. And that, that's pretty much it, I think. Let's try it out, see if it works. So we'll click create button. I think I clicked it. And if we refresh this, we will hopefully see our new user in here. Nice, it's not in there. Do we click the button? Now we definitely clicked it. So the most important thing when you're writing an app is to make sure you follow directions. I just spent like 30 minutes trying to figure out what the problem was and it's because my Google services.json was in in this Android folder, not in the app folder. You want to make sure it's in the app folder and then everything will work. So now let's get back to it. If we click create, we should see uh, something pop up here. Hopefully. Perfect. Users, test user, test, last name, user. It's as simple as that. For the read, we're going to get a document snapshot. So we're going to want to do document snapshot equals await Firestore that collection from the user's collection. And what document do we want? Document named test user. And we want to get that document. We'll just do a print of the document snapshot dot data. So now if we click read, we should give us this document with the first name test, last name user. First name test, last name user. Easy. All right, next one, update. We're gonna have Firestore, Firestore dot collection, users dot document, test user dot update data. 
what data do we want to update? We want to update, let's say, first name to be test test updated. And now if we run that, let's see if we can get the same data. So we clicked update and we can just click read and test updated. If we check the database, it'll just be the one document and we'll have test updated. Last one, we have Firestore dot collection users document test user dot delete. Simple as that. We could delete that document and everything's gone. So those are the four easy quick steps of Firebase and its CRUD operations. You can obviously make this a lot more complicated. This is just the very basics. When you start it up, you'd probably have an authentication and you'll have a user ID. So for the document, let's say in the users, you'd have a document name of the user's ID followed by all the information. And then you could retrieve the user's ID and update documents and delete documents just however you want. So that's pretty much it for the four CRUD operations with databases. This code will be in the description below. If you have any questions, make sure to leave it in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.